Black Magic Design produces a lot of video switchers. Here are 10 things about the ATEM Constellation Series switchers that, for the cost, I think make them great switchers. If you are in the market, you might want to buy a Constellation 1ME versus an ATEM Mini or an ATEM Extreme. This ATEM Constellation 1ME is actually cheaper than the ATEM Extreme, which only has eight inputs and its two outputs. The Constellation series does not have any ISO recording over USB functionality or streaming encoding, but the Constellation 1ME has 10 SDI inputs, six assignable SDI outputs, plus one multi-view port and front-facing buttons. Let's start this list with the fully customizable multi-view. This is what the normal 10-box multi-view looks like with preview and program at the top. Then cameras one through four and five through eight show across the bottom. With the customization options in this ATEM switcher, the multi-view can be customized any way you'd like. You can turn it into a 16 box multi-view or make it a four box multi-view. To take this a step further, each of these boxes can be assigned to show any input or output in any of these boxes. So it's completely customizable. I think that is one of the coolest things about these switchers. If you have a 2ME Constellation switcher, you can show the program window of ME1 on ME2. Depending on what model switcher you have, you can get an additional fully customizable multi-view per ME. If you have the 2ME Constellation switcher, you could get two fully customizable multi-view outputs. The third thing I love is that all of the ATEM switchers have network control, but it's still a super cool thing. Set up a button on a Stream Deck controller that when pushed places camera X in program on ME1. Then set up a feedback in BitFocus Companion to check and see if camera X is in program. And if it actually is, then it can be set to change the background color of the Stream Deck button until you switch away and it goes back to the not in program color. This is a great indicator to what camera is in program. My fourth favorite thing is that each input on the ATEM Constellation switchers have a built-in scaler. This is pretty common for the modern ATEM switchers, including the Mini Series, the Extreme Series, and now the Constellation Series switchers. This means that the frame rates and resolutions do not need to match from the input source to the ATEM switcher. I'm utilizing this in one of our multi-purpose rooms where I've got a bunch of sources coming from these three conference room style spaces and then outputting to the three projectors in each of the rooms, as well as the middle room has a stage display TV on the back wall. So we can send any content to any of these four screens, but we can also bring sources in from any of the three rooms and it doesn't matter what the frame rate or resolution is from those sources, it'll convert it into the switcher input. So we can then use the Stream Deck to output. If you're interested in that video, go ahead and click on the card to check out the video on that project. The fifth thing that I think is really cool, and it's not really a feature, but is something I wanted to mention because it's kind of good to know that it exists. Have you ever made a change on your ATEM switcher and then returned after the switcher was rebooted only to wonder why your changes weren't saved? I have asked this question. After I make any change to the switcher, why does the ATEM not load the same after I reboot? And this is because you need to save your startup state. In the ATEM control software, click the top left, click save, and then save startup state. Do this after you make any change so that the switcher will boot up in this new state. Number six is the super source. And if you set up a new super source, make sure you save your boot up state so that you don't lose your settings. The same if you set any macros or anything. Super source is a great feature of the 2ME and above constellation switchers. It's really cool. This is when you take inputs and you turn them into a multi-box. The news channels, they love to use these like 90% of the time to show two cameras or four people, four cameras in one shot. You might have all of your people at the table, but then you have one shots of each person that you bring into the box. It really helps pull people together, especially when you're bringing in online guests via Zoom or other things, you can have them, the guests look like they're a part of the conversation because they are, that's the goal. Once you set all these up, be sure to save each of these layouts as macros so that you can quickly recall that customization. 
And that brings us to number seven, which is exactly that. If you want to save several super sources, but you only have one available super source, you can save them as a macro, which then you can recall them in just a second. This way you can basically have unlimited macros saved, unlimited super source designs saved, and you can just use the macros to recall them and even have a button from a stream deck to change the super source design in almost real time. My eighth idea is that with these constellation switchers, they have six SDI auxiliary outputs. And that word auxiliary is the big deal here. These are fully assignable outputs from the SDI outports on this ATEM switcher. I've got destinations such as our audience projector, our building TVs, our streaming encoder. We have four outputs going to our Blackmagic MultiView, which turns four inputs into a quad MultiView. Having this MultiView allows our operator to see all four cameras at once. And it's so nice to be able to have these adjustable outputs going to this multi-view so that we can easily change the source if necessary to show additional different feeds. We have a 2ME Constellation switcher, so we could use our second multi-view for this task, but we already own the Blackmagic Quad multi-view box, so we're just using that. But it is nice to be able to use our bar outputs to send content straight to there. And the Blackmagic Quad multi-view box does have an in and through to go back into the switcher, but I like to have the reliability of bringing our inputs straight into the switcher. So it's really nice to just send our four outputs to the multi-view box. Anyways, it's really cool. I had the idea that I could run our SDI multi-view port back into one of the inputs on the switcher and then assign it on any of the outputs that I wanted. But I did notice that the quality definitely diminished and the latency got a lot worse on the output. So I don't recommend doing this. Number nine is the idea of labels. Labels allow the text to be customized. In the settings page on the ATEM switcher, specifically in the control software on my laptop, I can change the labels for our inputs and outputs. I can also set a short name, and these labels show up across the ATEM switcher. One place is the multi-view, as well as the output source list, if you click on the outputs. If you have a control surface, you're gonna see these labels appear there also on the little scribble strips, showing you when you push that button, what it's gonna do. With the ability to label the inputs and outputs, you can keep your ATEM switcher super organized. And organization is key when managing lots of inputs and outputs. So the ability to label things is huge. Okay, number 10, the Constellation switchers are rack mounted. So you need a control surface to operate them. The 1ME panel is sort of expensive. So the ATEM micro panel, which just controls the ATEM control software, it's like a fancy uh, Blackmagic keyboard for their software. That's a good option, but I would also recommend looking into an older ATEM control surface or starting with a couple Stream Deck XLs. If you have not used Stream Deck, they are a fancy keyboard with screens in the buttons that you can program to do anything, specifically using BitFocus Companion for maximum flexibility. Thanks so much for watching this rundown of the best features of the Blackmagic A10 Constellation switchers. Schedule a time with me on my calendar at crazyamazingdesigns.com slash training if you'd like help getting your live streaming going strong. I love live streaming. I've been using the Canon PTZ cameras and they're fantastic. If you're looking for new PTZ cameras or a new video switcher, I'd love to help you with your ProPresenter setup or whatever you got going on. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.